turnkey providers. They provide a great service or great product, but can you do it cheaper? This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm James Wise. This is Holt Wise TV. And this is where I help investors like you start, build, or grow your real estate portfolios. Now, guy I'm working with today, my man, Joe from New Jersey. And Joe, what we do is pretty unique and special, and it helps guys like you, I think, right? Because you come to me, you're like, hey, you know, I'm interested in maybe doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. I'm interested in money. I'm interested in making money. James, I want to make money in real estate. I know there's a lot of strategies. There's turnkey. There's multifamily. There's single family. What works best in the Cleveland market? Things of that nature, right? I'm in Jersey. I know prices, my money, it's going to go a lot farther in Cleveland. Help me out, right? And that's that's what we do. That's what we're here for, Joe. Because your traditional turnkey providers, people, they do one thing. They do it well, but they only do one thing. They buy fucked up houses. They fix those houses up so they're no longer fucked up. They put a tenant in there, and then they sell them. But this is the key to the thing. They sell them for a premium to who? To you. Now, if you're an investor, you're a very busy investor, I don't think that's bad or wrong. I am not vilifying the turnkey model, okay? Just letting you know there are alternatives, cheaper alternatives, okay? Now, with the turnkey model, you get a fully tenanted, proven commodity, proven product. You don't need to have a lot of cash into the deal. You just pluck down your down payment, and you start making money. That's great. I'm not poo-pooing on that, so don't anybody be like, fuck turnkey. Holt Wise says fuck turkey. It's not what I'm saying, right? If you're some investors, that's the best that's the best way to do it, okay? But you, Joe, you have a lot of cash, okay? You have a lot of cash available at your disposal. And if you're willing to take on a little bit more risk and you're a little bit more patient, you can possibly... Uh, get a little bit more. You can get a little bit of equity out of this, right? Because in a traditional turnkey scenario, every dollar they discount the property to give you mu to you know give you equity, it's a dollar they're losing. Every dollar you're spending is a dollar they're making. You guys are you know not s exactly aligned. You are kind of opposing, right? So you know you have to pay the premium for the product and service they provide. With Holton Wise, we'll provide you the same services to get you the turnkey effect. Right? We'll give you the property management, the maintenance, construction, but we will let you and work with you and help you find those distressed properties without us being the middleman and buying them. Right, We will give you our services and our infrastructure, Right, and you could possibly pull off a bird deal and get that equity for yourself. And I got one of those that I thought you'd be interested in that me and you are going to look at right after this commercial break. Hey lenders, are you looking to be part of our referral program? If so, send us an email at sales at holtonwise.com. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Let's jump right into this Burr deal. 4017 West 23rd, Cleveland, 44109. It's been on the market for 43 days. The reason it's been on the market for so long is, is twofold, right? Well, number one, screwing up my court here. Number one, it's fucked up, right? The property is just so fucking jacked, which is awesome for investors like you. Investors who want to make money, who want to do the bird deals. You guys are looking for fucked up properties, so that's great. But when you're trying to sell a property, what the... Man, my, my cord is still jacked up. All right, let me get the mic fixed. What that's going to do is it's going to cut the buyer base in half, right? If you're a seller, right? Who, do you, who, who can you sell a property to? You can sell it to two kinds of people. One, investors like you. Two, owner occupants, families, people that want to live there, okay? Well, people that want to live there, they can't do it, right? First time home buyers, stuff like that. They can't live in this property. It's never going to qualify for financing. Only cash deals are going to be had, right? Because it's not livable. Look, it's it's all fucked to total hell, dude. It's just totally fucking destroyed, right? It's it's just jacked, right? Like I don't even know what that crap is in there. That's probably crap coming from the ceiling, I'm assuming, 
right? You got just grossness and mold and just, you know, that's a park, okay? But just nastiness. Like, look at these countertops. <laughs> like, what is going on here, right? You got a hole in the ceiling right there. Like, the, the whole thing, it's, it's just totally wrecked and unlivable, right? There's no scenario where any traditional lender of any sort uh, w would finance uh, like a first-time home buyer or anything of that nature. So the only people... The only people that could buy this bad boy are going to be real estate investors like you, right? So great for you, bad for the sellers, right? So that's one reason why it's been on the market for 43 days. The other reason is they priced it too high. They just dropped it down to 60K, which is getting closer, but that's still not the right price. Originally, I think they had it at like 70K. Those people are bad shit crazy. Ain't nobody coming in with $60,000 cash to take this down. Just like nobody came in with $70,000 to take this down, right? The price, the price I want to see you guys pay, 40k at 40k it makes a hell of a lot of sense because in addition to that 40k we're going to need to spend about thirty five thousand dollars putting this back together what that's going to entail right it's going to get it to a section eight rent ready standard right so we're going to go in pretty much rip out the kitchen rip out the baths replace those with home depot lowe's quality kitchen and baths right home depot lowe's quality uh fixtures you know, you get the countertop, modern looking decor. Kitchen and bath are going to have matching vinyl allure flooring. The rest of the house, and they're going to have agreeable uh, gray walls, okay, agreeable gray walls with white trim. Rest of the house also going to have agreeable gray walls, white trim. And under the carpets that you saw that were all jacked up, we're going to rip those out. There's going to be hardwoods because all these old Cleveland homes have original hardwoods. We're going to buff the crap out of those things, put down a nice deep dark stain to hide some imperfections make it look good right so the whole home flowing hardwoods agreeable gray paint white trim kitchen and bath they don't have the nice hardwoods under there they just have subfloors under there usually so those are going to get modern looking matching vinyl allure in addition to that it appeared the furnace uh was in usable shape right Okay, so that cosmetic stuff, that's going to be like 20 to 25K. I believe our furnace is going to be usable, going to be salvageable. So we don't need to spend the $3,000 in this. But I saw a lot of water damage. So I'm assuming we're going to need to spend some money on a roof, probably 6 or 7K there, possibly a hot water tank, right? So 20 to 25 is going to get us all cosmetic fixed up. Then I got another $10,000 budgeted for a roof and other stuff, possibly a hot water tank, possibly this, possibly that. I can't tell you exactly what it's going to need at this moment in time from the studio, right? This is just the desktop analysis, so we're just looking at it here. We're, of course, going to need uh, to get a general home inspection done for you, right? The video, that's the first step of the due diligence process. If we get your offer accepted, we go to the second step, which is getting a home inspector to go in there and, and check everything out, go through the house with a fine-tooth comb. After we get that inspection, I can go over it with you and see if I see anything else identified that would blow our $35,000 budget, right? But it's not like I know there's going to be nothing else in addition to that, right? That's why I got about twenty twenty five dollars for those cosmetics. And then I have 10 budgeted when it looks like I only know for sure we're going to need six or seven on a roof, right? So I got that extra little... Uh, buffer there because i know you know obviously there's going to be something i bet so we'll check that out and if it turns out that the budget of 35k is going to be blown that's okay because we'll go back to the sellers and we'll do one of two things we'll either kill the deal or we'll get them to reduce price to where it works out because we need to be all into this investment for seventy-five thousand dollars. If we're all in at seventy-five, what that's going to get us is a thousand-dollar a month Section Eight tenant, right? So twelve K is going to be scheduled to come in. After accounting for all the fixed and variable expenses, I presume this property will bring us home an NOI of six thousand twenty dollars. Now, this is the good part. This is where it gets great. This is why we as investors love, love, love seeing properties that are jacked the fuck up because. We can leverage our cash. We're all in at 75. Well, now that it's all fixed, ready, rented, rocking and rolling, the bank's going to come in and appraise it. And a conservative appraisal estimate that I have for you is 80. Could possibly be higher, but I like to be conservative on these. 80K. So we created that $5,000 just with our work. Might not seem like a lot, but when you really play these numbers, folks, you know, that really can propel you to a huge cash-on-cash cash return because that would be a 20% return on your money, okay? 
That is a huge return on rental real estate. In addition to that, now you got a fully renovated, beautiful turnkey house, right? You get to extract that value, that equity. It's not like you're going to a regular turnkey provider and they're extracting that equity, right? It, it belongs to you. As for the neighborhood, I love this neighborhood, by the way. This is right near Metro Health, okay? Right now, consider this high D, low C neighborhood, okay? So that's why Section 8 tenants, that's why they're imperative, all right? But you see, Metro Health, if I'm betting on a low-income area, I want to bet near Metro Health, okay? Here's the property. This is the whole Brooklyn Center neighborhood, all right? Do do do. Right here. This is the hospital right down the street, okay? Let me make this bigger so you guys can see. Okay. Our property's here, right down the street, right there. If you're sick, this is the hospital you're going to. This is Metro Health. You could Google this. I'll put some links in the show notes below. They're investing a billion dollars into that hospital and the surrounding neighborhood. A billion. B, like boy, not million. A billion dollars into affordable housing, into this or that. People always ask me, like, yo, Cleveland's a cash flow market. What about appreciation, this or that, right? Look, I'm not much of a spec, spec play kind of guy, right? Honestly, if you're coming to the Cleveland market, you should be focused on cash flow. If you're trying to be like a spec player, dude, you should stay home in California or one of those type of markets, right? That's where the speculators are. People come here for cash flow. So I don't really talk on speculation all that much because speculation, it's speculation. You could be right, you could be wrong. But what I will tell you is this. If you're going to make a bet on a particular neighborhood, changing, going up, gentrifying, this is the neighborhood, the Brooklyn Center neighborhood. This is the one, Brooklyn Center, Clark Fulton area. That's the one I'd bet on. Why? Because of that billion-dollar injection of capital, right? You take a low-income neighborhood, you inject a billion bucks into it. Well, logic to me dictates that things are going to go up. In addition to that, just north, okay, just north, Ohio City, Tremont, Detroit Shoreway, Gordon Square, Edgewater, right? All neighborhoods that have gentrified in the Cleveland market. So we're bordering gentrified neighborhoods, and we're smashing a billion dollars in there. So, you know, I'm not uh, Mr. Speculation, but that appears to be clear evidence that if I'm going to make a bet, I'm going to bet here in this particular neighborhood, and that's why Holton Wise has been going heavy into those areas. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.